Hi, my name is Susan Kung, and I'm here to show you ILA 3.0, an intuitive, equitable, and engaging digital repository. On May 1st of this year, 2024, ILA launched the third version of its repository software. Major goals for the rebuild included visual and functional improvements to the user experience and the addition of a Portuguese graphical user interface. The newly rebuilt repository features a redesigned logo, a completely rebuilt and custom designed technology stack and, a tri and trilingual GUIs that together provide a more intuitive and equitable user experience. In this presentation, I will show you some of the features that demonstrate the equity of access and the ease of navigation and use. The most equitable component of this rebuild is the addition of a Portuguese user interface. Although ILA has had English and Spanish interfaces since its launch in 2001, a lack of a Portuguese interface has made it inaccessible to an entire country in its target demographic, namely Brazil. Portuguese-specific fields were added to every level of the metadata, including collections, folders, files, and taxonomies. Existing metadata in all existing collections was translated into Portuguese to fill these fields. This monumental translation effort was handled via both AI and professional translation. The language picker is in the upper left corner on the home page. Users can select from English, shown here, or Spanish, which we can see now, or Portuguese, which we are looking at now. Once the user enters into the database, the language picker moves to the upper right corner next to the light dark mode picker indicated by a sun or moon and the user icon indicated by a purple circle with the user's initials inside. Furthermore, depositors have the option to include a collection title and description in an indigenous language of their choice for their collection. The fields are also available for folders and sets within the collection. These fields are always displayed alongside the interface language that the user selected using the language picker. In this screenshot, we see the title in English at the top. Underneath that in very small font is the title in Spanish and Portuguese. Next comes the description in English, and under that we see the title in the indigenous language, which is South Bolivian Quechua. Underneath that is the description in the same language. Both of these fields are labeled to indicate the language that appears in them. If I were using the Spanish interface, the Spanish title and description fields would be featured next to the indigenous language. The same goes if I were using the interface in Portuguese. I'll quickly demo the structure of ILA 3. Like ILA 1 and 2, ILA 3 consists of collections that contain folders. However, ILA 3 has an additional level called the set or data set. Folders contain sets and sets contain media files grouped together in a media carousel. Here we see collections and each collection is represented by a single tile. We also have the option of switching to list view, which I'll do now. These colorful ovals each contain the name of a language represented in a particular collection. This is a really colorful way to represent how many languages are in each collection. If I scroll down, I can adjust the number of collections that I view in a single list view. And now I'm going to scroll down to pick the Bolivian Quechua verbal art. This is the same collection I showed you before because it has um, the title and the description in South Bolivian Quechua. So this is the collection level. You can see the metadata here at the top of the page. Um, contributor language and country information is displayed on the left-hand side, and all of the folders contained in the collection are displayed on the right-hand side. There are four folders inside this collection. I'll click on one of these. We're now inside the folder. On the left-hand side is the metadata about the folder. And on the right-hand side is the list of sets contained in that folder. There's only one set listed here. I'll click on it. At the top of the page is the set level metadata. 
And in the middle of the page is the media carousel. And below the media carousel is the file list. Each file can be unpacked to show its detailed metadata. And if the user is logged in, each file can be downloaded along with its metadata. Now I'll move back up to the media carousel to show that the first file listed in the list is displayed here in the viewer. And there's a thumbnail for each of the other files down here at the bottom. If I want to advance to another um, file, I can simply click on its thumbnail or I can use this purple clicker to go left or right in the list. And so I just clicked and now a video file is displayed, whereas before we were looking at a text file. There are now multiple ways to dive into the contents of the repository via five different databases, collections, languages, countries, organizations, and persons. These databases are found on the left sidebar under the header data. Each one of these databases has its own search window, and once a user selects an item of interest, all collections and sets tagged with that item are displayed in a list. I'll demonstrate this for the languages database only. The other databases work the same way. So I will click on languages, and this takes me to the languages database. Here at the top, notice that this search window is the advanced search window. You can see the filter here. I'm not gonna be demoing that in this presentation for lack of time. However, please note that each one of the databases has a dedicated search window just for it on the right-hand side. We also have the option to download the complete list of languages and metadata for each of those languages here with this download button. For now, I'm going to look for a language called San Miguel Chimalapa Soque. I can't talk and type at the same time. Okay, and you'll see that I typed enough that the exact language I was looking for popped up. I'll click on that language and look at that. We got an error fetching data. That happens quite a lot. So I'll just refresh and um, go back to where I was. Notice that it brought up that language. So on the left-hand side is metadata about the language. And on the right-hand side is a list of all of the collections that are tagged for San Miguel Chimalapa Soque. I'm just gonna click on one of them to demonstrate how this is a way to go right into a particular collection that you might be interested in. Now I'll discuss four areas where we've made Isla easier to use and access. First, the visibility setting at the set level has replaced the opaque access level numbers one through four that were used to indicate restricted or unrestricted access in earlier versions of Isla. Second, a built-in form facilitates communication between collection owners and users who want to access restricted media sets. Third, user roles facilitate fine-grained access to part or all of a collection. And fourth, a citation button clearly indicates to users how a collection, folder, or set should be cited. The visibility setting is displayed in two locations, in the set list at the folder level and directly above the media carousel at the set level. Here we see the login required visibility setting indicated by a blue pill. This corresponds to access level one in previous versions of Isla. If a user is not logged in or registered, the media carousel is not visible. Instead, the user sees this message. Files in the set are login required. Only logged in and verified Isla users can view and or download the files in this set. Along with this message, the user is prompted to log in or register, and the purple buttons lead them to the correct locations to do one or the other. Additional visibility settings include restricted, the red pill, embargoed, the yellow pill, and a new one called public, the green pill. When a user clicks on a restricted set, the media carousel is suppressed. Instead, there's a message that says, Files in this set are restricted. 
only assigned owners, editors, and viewers can view or download the files in this set. The restricted visibility setting corresponds to access levels two and four in previous versions of ILA. The purple request access button provides the user with a clear and direct way to request access to the set, which I will describe now. When the user clicks the purple button to request access to a restricted set, a fillable form pops up. The user should fill this form out with detailed information about why they need or want to access this restricted media set. Clicking the purple request button in the bottom right corner of the form will send an email to Isla and to the collection owner who might grant viewer access depending on the specific details of the media set. When a user clicks on an embargoed set, the media carousel is suppressed, just like it is for the restricted set. Here, the message says, files in this set are embargoed until 2030, January 1st. Until the specified embargo date, only assigned owners, editors, and viewers can view or download the files in this set. After the embargo date, all verified ILA users can access them. The embargoed visibility setting corresponds to access level three in previous versions of ILA. Again, the purple request access button provides the user with a clear and direct way to request access to the set. Moving forward, since our May 1st launch, there is a five year limit for all embargoes. However, since many collections from previous versions of ILA had longer embargoes, these collections have been grandfathered in, and we are still respecting those longer embargoes. Finally, we come to the new visibility setting, public access. Users who do not have an ILA account or who are not logged in will be able to see the media files, but they will not be able to download them. In order to download them, they would need to either create an account or log into their existing account. This public setting can be used for any digital object that's intended for broad distribution, such as digital works licensed under Creative Commons, like the videos shown here. Registered ILA users can be granted three additional types of user roles, owner, editor, and viewer. People who deposit materials to ILA will be assigned the role of owner for their collections. They can optionally assign other people to be owners as well. This is a best practice for depositors who need someone else to take over the active management of their collections. For example, they could assign a community member or organization or close colleague to manage access to the collection when they are no longer able to do so. Owners can also assign other ILA users to be editors or viewers of one or more sets or folders in their collection or even of the entire collection. We envision that the editor role will be used by depositors who want to give this kind of access to their research assistants on a temporary or permanent basis. If a collection owner gets a request to access a particular set, they can give that ILA user the viewer role if they wish, so that the user can view or download the media on their own. Finally, ILA 3.0 has a citation button at the set, folder, and collection levels. This button is indicated by a double quotation mark, and it is always found in the upper right corner of the collection folder or set. This concludes my demonstration of ILA 3.0. As a reminder, the repository can be found and accessed at isla.utexas.org. I can be reached at isla at isla.utexas.org. And information for users such as FAQs and depositor information can be found at guides.lib.utexas.edu slash ILA. You'll also find information about the technical details of the technology stack there. To conclude, the software developers and I sincerely hope these improvements will make ILA more functional and, and engaging for its Latin American user base and especially for Indigenous peoples whose languages are represented in the repository. Thank you very much.